We're going to look at 2.1.4, and this is given two equations. We want to find the area in between them. And they do, on this one, give us a nice graph, but I want to do this problem without using this graph here. So what we're asked to do is uh, get the x values that they intersect on. So while we have the graph, let's just establish what's going to be happening here. We're going to get two x values. Typically, we go a and b for the little and the big. There's going to be a top and a bottom function. Uh, the book uses f and g, but I'm just going to label them top and bottom. Now, it's pretty clear which one's the top and the bottom from the graph because the top is a parabola and the bottom is a line. So you can just go and see which one's top, which one's bottom. What we're going to do is ignore this graph and redo all of this work uh, without actually having a graph. So I rewrote the equations here. First thing we're going to do is get the intersection points. We can estimate them from the graph, but I want to get the exact values. How do we intersect? We're going to set these equal to each other. So they're each solve for y. So we're going to set y equal to y. And then substitute in on the left, I'll put the parabola. And on the right will be the line. So this is a quadratic equation. So we're going to get everything on one side. I'm going to solve for 0. So we're going to add 2x squared. To both sides, we're going to subtract 20. So we have minus 15, oh, minus 20 is minus 35. All right, now we're going to try to, there's three ways to solve. You can complete the square, which we're going to have fractions if we do that. You can try quadratic formula. I'm a little worried about that nasty number right there. Uh, I don't really want to be multiplying with 35. And we can try factor get lucky. So let's go ahead and see if we can factor and get lucky. Good news is the coordinate of x squared is prime. So if we're going to get lucky, it's going to be a 2x and an x here. Now we got to multiply to make 35. There's not many ways to factor 35. It's 5 times 7. Is that right? Yeah, 5 times 7. And that's the only choice that you have. So let's go ahead and uh, we need this to be negative. So one's positive, one's negative. So let's just try a 5 and a 7 like this and see what happens. All right, so from here, let's go. Uh, so we multiply to get 35. 2 times 7 is 14. 5 times x is 5. So that's not going to give us the 3, uh, adding or subtracting. So let's try the other way around. Let's go 7, 5. Now I'm doing my favorite thing in math, which is guessing and checking. Uh, with this setup right here, we have uh, 7 times x, 7x, 5 times 2x is 10x. The difference will be 3x if we put the negative on the correct side. So where should the negative go? We want this term to be positive. So we do positive 5 times 2 is 10x. Minus 7x gives us the positive 3x. So there we go. We got zero product property. So set. that means each of these are uh, equal to zero. Uh, or 0 equals x plus 5. So we got negative 5 is x. And 7 equals 2x. 7 halves equals x. All right. So we just got the two x values where they intersect. So we got 7 halves is the positive and negative 5 is the negative. All right, so that takes care of some of it. Now, how do we know which one's on the top, which one's on the bottom? We're going to need to figure that out. Now, of course, I can cheat. Look at the graph. Okay, quadratics on the top, lines on the bottom. However, let's think of another way to do this. All we know is down here, there's two functions. I have a quadratic and a linear. Now, the quadratic is sad because it's a negative squared term. So the quadratics can be sad. The linear, uh, let's just pay attention to the slope. It's going to be positive, so it's going to go up to the right. All right, so this graph overall, it's going to have a sad parabola. Now, if the line doesn't intersect the parabola, obviously we, there's no area in between. We know it intersects twice, 
So it's going to have to look something like this. We got our two intersection points. And now we can tell that the parabola is on the top, the line's on the bottom. If you're still in doubt, what else can you do? Well, there's another thing you could do. You can plug in a value in between your two x values. Uh, luckily, one's negative, one's positive. So the easiest value in between, you can plug in x equals 0 to see which one has the bigger y value. Now, you can't always use 0. I can only use 0 because one's negative and one's positive. So zero's in between. But I would just use any integer between those two values and plug it in. Uh, Zero is super easy because you plug in zero, you got zero plus 20, zero minus 15. So it's clear that this will be the top because it has the bigger y value uh, in between the points of intersection. All right, so we're getting there. All right, next thing we're going to do is set up our area. Area, I usually use A for that. Uh, A to B, now we've got top minus bottom. Now, how do I know this is a dx and not dy? Uh, there's a few reasons. Uh, one of the big hints is they gave us the equations as functions of x. So you're probably going to have an x uh, variable as your uh, differentiation variable. Uh, also, it, once you see what the graph looks like here, if you want to find the area, you're going to need a cross section. And our cross section, if we choose a vertical cross section, we have the same top and bottom function as we move our cross section across this entire area. I like to think of it as squeegeeing a window where your squeegee is held vertically. So you squeegee the window by moving the X coordinate. That's how you would cover this whole area. You'd move your X coordinate to clean that window. Okay, so we're ready to plug all this in. So our small is negative five, our big is seven halves. Our top, we said, was the quadratic, which is negative 2x squared plus 20. Minus the bottom, which was 3x minus 15. Now I'm using these extra parentheses because I need to make sure I subtract the entire 3x minus 15. You can definitely distribute that negative if you want. Oops like that. Uh, however, the more steps you skip, the higher chance that you make a mistake, uh, which I always find is not very fun. It is fun to go fast, but I'd rather go medium speed and make less mistakes. Uh, now, to integrate this, we just have the anti-power rule here, and you just combine your constants together, and then just do the little anti-power rule, plug in your endpoints, and you're done. Now, some common mistakes that I see, if you switch your top and your bottom, what happens, uh, you will get negative. So this measurement right here should be positive if you actually have a bigger y value minus a smaller y value. But if you got them incorrect, you're going to do bottom minus top, and that will give you a negative area. The other way to get negative area, as you saw before, if you switch your endpoints, uh, you'll get a negative uh, integral right there. So I'm going to stop here and not keep integrating because that was what we covered before, and I think you've probably heard me talk long enough. So good luck on this problem.